Hi, it's Greg. This is part two of building a belt grinder. And in part one, which you should watch first, of course, I built the uh, VFD cabinet and wired it all up and tested it using the built-in VFD control here. Also wired it with eight wires uh, connector here for remote control so that I can eventually uh, control all those VFD functions that I need, forward and reverse, on, off, and speed through this interface. So I've just stripped the wires here. I'm going to start playing with the components to see how we can figure out to get this thing working. Okay, on the bench here to give this thing a first try with the potentiometer and switch hooked up. So recall my wiring for the contactor is the black and the red to connect them turns the VFD on, right? That close of the contactor turns the VFD on. So this potentiometer I bought, the 10K pot with an integral switch on the back. So I've hooked the black and the red across the switch. So that lets me turn the VFD on like that. I close the contactor. And now for the speed control, that's controlled by this potentiometer where I've put the orange, that's the five volt out from the VFD and the green is the ground, and then the center tap is the yellow. That feeds the voltage back into the VFD that decides how fast it goes. It's from zero to five volts, obviously, if I should turn the potentiometer. And then depending on which way you want it to turn, obviously you want it to go faster as you turn the knob to the right conventionally, so you just have to arrange the orange and the green wires in the appropriate position for that, which I've done. And then I've tapped off the same five volt here. This is all just twisted together temporarily, of course, just twisted wires on here. I have no soldering or anything. It's just to see how it works. So I've taken the five volt off here to the switch, uh, toggle switch, to the center, and then that will feed either the blue wire or the brown wire with that five volts, and that will control forward and reverse. Okay, and then the other part of this puzzle is in order to tell the VFD that you're doing this, that you're doing the control from out here rather than the, the main panel, is there, is there some programming that goes on? So the programming I've done, it's done on this guy by hitting the set menu and then looking in the book here to see what's what. And, uh, you know, they don't make it easy, but you can figure it out eventually what the programming parameters are here. They have a list of everything listed out and then they have um, actual values you can set them to a little further on. So PN02, programming number 02, sets the startup frequency, just, you know, where you want it to start. And I've set that to very minimum. PN02, I've got set to, set to 50. I don't want that. I want to run that down. Initial start frequency, I want to run that down to something slower. Let's say I want it to start off really slow at just, uh, just like 5. I find if you hold these buttons down, it will uh, do fast acceleration, and it's easy to run past what you want, too. you got to sort of sneak up on it. There's 510, and I'll go down here to 5. All right? And then you press the set button, sets it, and then it indexes to the next one. PN03 is the critical one that tells it that, I, that I'm using, instead of the knob here, which they call the potentiometer, panel potentiometer, setting out to, number th to a 3, tells that I'm using an external 0 to 5 volt signal, which is exactly what I'm doing here, external 0 to 5 volt signal. So number 3, I've got set to 3 to use the external potentiometer, okay? And then going to the next one, which is 4, tells it where it's going to get the forward and reverse signal from. And again, either the panel button is the default or setting it to 2 says I'm going to use the external signal control, which is this, which I'm doing here. So um, that's all I've done. Oh, and the, other, the only other guys I've set on here is the minimum and maximum frequencies. So this is a 1750 RPM motor if it gets 60 hertz. That's very typical. Um, this VFD, as delivered, the default was 50 hertz, um, which wouldn't run it at its full speed, obviously. So I have changed that uh, setting number 10, I believe it is. Maximum runtime frequency, I've set to 100. So basically, I'm going to run this motor faster than it's really designed for. But I know they make a they make a twice speed version of this thing. So I know the bearings are good. It should be able to handle it, no problem. And obviously, I've tried it out already. So basically, I'm overdriving this thing. And so the math would be 1750 
divided by its normal 60 hertz and then times 100, which I'm really going to run at that, that should give me 2,916 RPM thereabouts. So about three, almost 3,000 RPM, which is great for this. Um, and then I also set the uh, minimum speed. It's the next parameter down there. It's parameter number 11 to 5. So basically, I don't want this motor to run slower than 5. I think it's just not good for the motor. You can see now, if you can see the window here, that it is controlling the speed properly from 0 to 100 as I turn it. Obviously, nothing's happening yet because I haven't hit the forward or reverse yet. So let's go. I put a piece of tape on here so you can see the motor running. So let's put it in one direction, which I believe is reverse. I mean, that, that should close the brown wire. There's no, you know, we can switch these around, no problem. So there it is going that way, and we can control the speed. Okay. And I can bring it back down. If I bring it down less than five, it should turn off. Yeah, it did, right there at five. So if I bring it up slowly over five, I can run it. But if I bring it less than five, it'll, it'll just stop, turn it off, okay, and flash. Then the other direction, which would be the forward, same deal. So I'll run this all the way at the full speed. And that's good. Throttle it back. So now I've got several ways to turn this off. I can either use a potentiometer switch to turn off the VFD, or I can set this to neutral position. You know, no command, turns it off as well. Um, and then in the final assembly, in the final control box, I will also hook up the emergency switch. You know, that in case of emergency, slap that switch in series with this off switch. So slapping the switch normally closed. If I slap the switch, it'll open up the, uh, the contacts, just like, just like turning this off. And now I just wanted to figure out this uh, emergency stop switch. Of course, it comes with no wiring diagram. So I've just got an ohmmeter out here. Uh, historians might uh, be interested. It's an old Radio Shack. I think I probably bought this thing. It's like, I remember buying this thing uh, at a local Radio Shack up in Canada, in the Toronto area. Oh, I'm going to guess 1975, maybe even earlier than that. This thing's been around a long time. The display is getting awfully weak on it, but it still works. And it's been dropped so many times. Unbelievable. It's a good old Radio Shack. So anyway, I just got it set to ohms here um, to figure out what's going on. So right now I've got it out like it should be activated. And I find out that green to yellow makes a contact. So that's what I want for it's on. Well, green to blue is nothing, right? So that's closed and open. And then if I hit my emergency switch, now the yellow has opened and the blue has closed. So that's it. So the green is the common wire, and then the open close is decided by the position of the switch. Okay, back again with a few small changes, and I think this is the final wiring diagram now. Experimentally laid out here, and it's working fine. So in series with the switch, the red wire is supplying 12 volt from the, from the wall wart. It used to go directly to one side of the switch. Now it's going through the green through my emergency switch, back out the yellow to supply the power to the, uh, the positive power to, this, to the uh, switch here. And then the negative used to be black. I, I switched the colors is all the difference there is. I switched the color to white. I'm using that white wire now I wasn't using before. Reason being is I realized I actually do need wall wart ground out here. I need the negative for the wall wart out here as well to run this light. I'll show you that in a sec. So by convention, I use the black wire for the 12 volt wall wart ground. All right, so I just spliced in the black wire to the wall wart ground over here. So it's the negative. So again, positive the wall wart's coming here through the emergency contactor, which is currently on. Then through the yellow wire to the switch. When I turn on the switch, that will be connected through the white wire back to the contactor. Okay. And notice also the green light came on. So I've got the green light just basically wired across the potentiometer plus five and ground. And it works fine on five volts, which is just great. It's a 12 volt LED, but that's plenty bright at five volts. So that's just basically showing that the VFD power is on, whether the motor's turning or not. The VFD power is on, just as a warning, okay? Um, and then if I hit the emergency switch, it breaks the contact to the switch, 
right? There's, you heard the contactor go off, so the VFD is powering down. Green light is still on because it's still... Those capacitors are still draining. That's what's shown at the core. The VFD takes quite a while to drain those capacitors. Now everything's gone off. And the red light is now powered through, you know, this green wire. This is now in the off position. The blue wire is powered now. So, and then, and then this is running back to that ground that I have to the ground of the wall board. Okay, and everything else the same. The potentiometer and the switch still work the same. Here's the final wiring diagram showing all the wire colors in their final state. It's two circuits, the contactor circuit at the top driven by the 12 volt wall wart and the VFD control circuit at the bottom driven by the 5 volt VFD out. You can of course pause the video here and print this out or rewind whatever you need. Now it's time to work out where all these components are going to go in this little uh, hobby box. Nice compact box. I really like these. Uh, aluminum two-piece well, actually four pieces, two end caps as well, and the end caps hold the two pieces together. The fact they come apart makes it convenient to, uh, to work around inside on them. Um, anyway, it's going to sit upright like this on one of the upright supports of the uh, belt grinder base. So sit pretty much like that. So I like the emergency stop on the top, and then we'll work out the other stuff around that. So. There actually is enough depth, barely, for the emergency stop this way, but again, I think I prefer to have it coming in the top. So if I have the emergency stop coming in the top, I center that there. It's got quite a lot of depth to it this way. So if I put the emergency stop there and the red LED on this side as well, centered nicely on the end cap there, then I can put the uh, potentiometer I probably could put it in the center, but I wouldn't risk it. I think I'd put it a little to this side, a little offset with the switch above it. And then the green LED beside the switch. I think that would look nice. So I'll get the fine details here and mark it up and center punch it and uh, start making some holes. installed the components in there and that's what it looks like.
So I don't know about you, but when I'm uh, doing concrete tap cons, I always like to put a little piece of um, zip tie in there, a little piece of plastic in there to start the hole. It gives the uh, screw something to really bite into. Makes a better connection, in my opinion. Never had one fall out when doing this. I had to take the uh, wall ward off again from the top, so I have access to that top left screw. So let me struggle and get those last two in. All right, that's it. Good and solid. Okay, I've got my box on the wall. I've got my motor here. Here's my finished control unit. I just want to do one final demo. So turn on the uh, VFD. I'm in neutral. I go forward. Speed control, no problem. Neutral back, whatever. You know that all works. I just want to show you a cool safety feature of this thing. Let's say that I lost power to the house while I had my motor running in the forward direction. It's just using up the last of the power there. So belt grinder was on and the power went out and I went to investigate and the power comes back on. I don't want the belt grinder coming back on on its own. And the cool thing is, is it won't. So I've got this switch turned on, motor still in the forward direction like the belt grinder was running as I abandoned it. Then the power comes back on. The VFD has a nice feature where if it, it won't take command forward and reverse when it's powered on. So that's a cool feature and it avoids having to use a, a more typical latching relay with a push button switch. You just don't need it in this configuration with this VFD. All right, so I think that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed it, hope it was useful. And now I can get on with building the grinder itself. I'll see you then.